What's up everyone? So today I wanna to talk about EVs and a couple of interesting things I've found across the web over the past couple of days. First, uh, I wanna talk about a recent test from Matt Watson at CarWow where he did an EV highway range test of four different vehicles and that was the Mercedes EQS, the BMW iX SUV, the Tesla Model 3, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E SUV. And so Matt Watson's goal was to really see what is the practical range of those vehicles relative to the manufacturer's claimed range for those vehicles. The other thing I want to talk about is related to Mazda U USA CEO Jeffrey Guyton's comments about EVs and their range. So his comment was, he doesn't see the future of EVs having a range in, in excess of 300 miles. And I agree with him. So I thought the timing of, of both of these sort of developments, the Matt Watson test and Jeffrey Guyton CEO, was really interesting. So I wanted to talk about EV range anxiety. So what is EV range anxiety? Well, it's this feeling by uh, drivers, uh, whether they are potential buyers of electric vehicles or are owners of internal combustion engine vehicles, uh, sort of our current uh, gas vehicles, that an EV uh, might leave them stranded. And so they will not consider an EV for that reason. So if we think about it, uh, pot potentially in the mind of, of, of those individuals, they cannot get to uh, their destination in an EV. They'll run out of battery. And along the way, if the battery is low, there will be nowhere to charge the EV. And so that's a very real thing. Uh, so much so that 58% of uh, American uh, auto buyers or who are considering sort of purchase of a vehicle uh, will not consider purchasing an EV because of range anxiety. So Yes, about 58% or six out of 10 consumers. And so I uh, wanted to really sort of look at whether this is a real thing or whether it's misinformation. And obviously the feelings uh, are real things. People are, are concerned about the range of electric vehicles relative to gas vehicles. Gas vehicles can do upwards of 400 to 500 miles on a single tank of fuel. Uh, the energy density of fuel is much higher than that of electric vehicles. Uh, but the technology uh, and battery efficiency and, and overall efficiency of electric vehicles uh, is improving and, and then the sort of benefits as it relates to no carbon emissions. But let me get back to the point. The other part of that is EV range anxiety really is misinformation. And how did it happen? Well, there's no sort of specific source uh, but we could sort of assume or, or, or you know, have a, a reasonable suspicion uh, that this was caused by some of the legacy automakers. So if we go back to 2012, that was the introduction of the Tesla Model S and talking about a flagship luxury EV uh, that could rival Mercedes-Benz and BMW. Uh, and at that time, uh, the Tesla Model S had about 260 miles of range and maybe pushing at the top end 280 miles of range but it was the only one uh, at that at, at, its, at that time uh, so EVs um, are still nowhere near the mainstream but uh, the Tesla Model S was a, a very unique model uh, or unique vehicle when it was introduced and at that time, reasonably so, you didn't have the Tesla supercharger network as we know it today with over 75,000 chargers worldwide. Uh, the type of uh, technology, the integration between the Tesla vehicles and the supercharger network. Uh, and then also, uh, EVs are still far from the mainstream. So there's a lot of reasons to have uh, anxiety or just overall sort of uh, negative feelings toward EVs. But if we look since then, obviously, uh, we're seeing uh, quite a proliferation of electric vehicles, everyone from Volkswagen now to Chevy, Audi, BMW uh, are producing EVs. And if we're looking at the sales, sales are quite healthy. Uh, I believe in Europe, uh, over 10% of new cars are EVs. In the US in 2022, that was 6%. California, 20%, actually 19% of vehicles sold 
uh, last year uh, were EVs. And so uh, there is quite strong growth in EVs now. And so this question of, ang of range anxiety, um, is it a reasonable concern at this point? So going back to the Matt Watson car wow test, uh, he tested the Mercedes-Benz EQS, which has a claimed range from Mercedes-Benz of 464 miles. The BMW iX uh, has a claimed range of about 382 miles. Uh, the Tesla Model Tesla Model 3, um, somewhere in the range of, of 380 miles as well. The point is, is that all of the vehicles in the test, including the Mustang Mach-E, all have a claimed range of over 290 miles. And the point of the test was to really sort of see how far the vehicles could go uh, in highway driving, because an EV in local driving is really where, it's, where it is its most efficient. Uh, and that's because of the regenerative braking uh, that EVs have that charge the battery during stop and go driving. Uh, so during the test, um, Matt Watson was able to uh, really sort of achieve on average about 76% of the claimed range from the manufacturers, and that's across the four vehicles tested, which is pretty good when considering the test was done in winter, roughly five degrees Celsius. Uh, there was no stopping for for uh, to charge those EVs, um, so quite respectable. So the question of EV range anxiety, uh, really not as big of a deal as people make it seem. And also, when we go back to the to Jeffrey Guyton's Mazda USA CEO's comments, uh, there are a lot of factors uh, to consider now with EVs. So, first, uh, now many EVs through their infotainment systems and, and integration uh, with with sort of mapping and GPS uh, can help drivers plan their route. And one with the route planning is. Where does the vehicle charge along the route? Uh, how much uh, projected battery range will there be uh, when the uh, when the driver gets to that point? And also, what is the anticipated charge time? Also, uh, these vehicles now have technology that when the vehicle is is sort of nearing uh, a charging station, it can start to preheat the battery so that the vehicle will charge faster. Uh, so you have those types of things to consider. There's also sort of mapping data as well uh, to really help with the range and efficiency of EVs. Uh, so for example, uh, when uh, going across an incline or, or sort of a uh, sort of highway stretch that's quite hilly, um, EVs now can sort of map out using GPS data how to optimize the motors and the batteries to, develop, to deliver power uh, where where the vehicle most needs it. So for example, going up a hill, really sort of uh, supplying that power uh, to the EV and, and also using it as most efficiently as possible. But then when going down a hill, uh, really capitalizing on the regenerative braking effect to really sort of uh, maximize uh, the range of these vehicles. Uh, also, uh, Tesla has uh, recently, I believe about one year ago, uh, introduced functionality to uh, calculate wind speed uh, into the range of its vehicles while driving along highway. Uh, so when uh, there are headwinds and things like that, uh, which slow the vehicle down, can certainly optimize for those types of conditions. So there are several things in place now being put into EVs uh, to really maximize uh, the range of these vehicles. And then also, let's talk about the infrastructure because that's a big one. And so now um, across the US and, and Europe, uh, you're seeing a, a real sort of uh, rapid development, well, maybe not rapid, but I'd say a fairly robust development of EV charging stations. So you have Electrify America, uh, which is really a venture from Volkswagen and, and Volkswagen has its line of EVs and that's the ID3, the ID4, ID5, the ID Buzz van, and then they recently announced the ID7 sedan prototype. Uh, and so uh, VW has a, a strong interest in supporting that in that 
uh, supporting a, a robust charging network. Uh, you have also the Ionity network, uh, and, and they're building out sort of comprehensive uh, infrastructure, uh, both in Europe and the US. Uh, there's Tesla Supercharger, as we know as well. Uh, but then also there's some announcements from even some of the manufacturers. So uh, last week I, I posted on my website about Porsche uh, in doing a multi-million dollar investment in the tens of millions of dollars in ABB uh, for charging infrastructure. And ABB is a, a, uh, a charging equipment manufacturer uh, as well as e-mobility company. And so Porsche is, is making a significant investment in, e, in ABB. And why is that? Well, for Porsche, which is a uh, luxury brand, ultra luxury brand, uh, they want to deliver the type of experience um, that really reflects their customer. And so the way to do that is to make sure that customers can charge their vehicles uh, without any problem and, and to have a Porsche uh, sponsored or Porsche operated EV charging network certainly helps that experience. Right now, Porsche has about 2,500 EV chargers worldwide, I believe at the end of this year and their target by the end of 2025 is to have uh, 7,500 uh, EV charging station worldwide. Uh, and then Mercedes-Benz is doing something similar. They recently announced uh, that they will have their own charging network as well. And so, uh, and, and why is that? It's not simply about the charging, it's about the experience. So for example, uh, things like food and entertainment and shopping, uh, just overall, just sort of uh, rest and relaxation uh, during a uh, during a trip. Uh, and then there's also the sort of customer relationship component, uh, existing vehicle owners as well as potentially new owners as well. Uh, so there's a lot of good reason that these uh, manufacturers have uh, to make sure uh, or have to, to really ensure that uh, EV owners don't have to have range anxiety and that they're delivering a really favorable experience uh, for EV owners. Um, but the last thing I want to consider as well is the vehicles themselves. Uh, so EVs are fairly young and, and still not quite mainstream, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, if we go back to the Ford Model T, uh, which was um, sort of developed and, and uh, introduced to the world in 1908, uh, you're talking roughly 115 year timeline for the internal combustion engine to really evolve and, and become refined. And so now we have uh, internal combustion engines that can achieve upwards of 40, 50 miles per gallon, uh, but it's taken time to get to that point. Uh, and so when we look at EVs, uh, EVs are much shorter time span. Even if we went back to 1997 when the Toyota Prius was introduced, um, it's still fairly young. Uh, what we're talking about here, roughly 25 years for hybrid, uh, uh, hybrid powertrains, uh, and now in the mainstream, or at least becoming more mainstream, roughly a 11 year timeline. So there, there will be improvements in, in EV technology, one in terms of battery technology. Uh, so right now we have lithium ion and cobalt and manganese uh, really sort of uh, optimizing these particular elements for batteries to develop more, uh, or deliver more energy density, deliver more range, uh, but then also even the materials used to make the batteries, the metals, uh, and then also how they are integrated into the car. So Tesla with its uh, 4680 round cells are able to integrate uh, that battery structure into the vehicles uh, to make it much more efficient in terms of one, uh, the weight of the vehicle. And so uh, going back to the Matt Watson car test, uh, here are a couple of things to consider. A BMW iX is 2.6 tons. A BMW X5, its gas equivalent is roughly in the range of 2.2 to 2.5 tons. Mercedes EQS EV is 2.5 to 2.6 tons. Its Mercedes-Benz S-Class luxury flagship gas counterpart uh, is roughly 2.2 to 2.5 tons. Toyota Camry, or actually Tesla Model 3, 1.8 tons. Uh, compared to a Toyota Camry at 1.6 tons. Uh, and so if we look at that, uh, when we compare sort of EVs and their gas equivalents, EVs are notably heavier than their gas equivalents, but that will improve um, uh, manufacturing processes and materials. So for example, carbon fiber, uh, carbon composite technology, uh, lightweight materials uh, using sustainable materials, uh, give EVs a chance uh, to really sort of come down in weight. 
uh, but then also the battery packs as well, smaller battery packs, uh, round cells. So uh, Merce I'm sorry, BMW has announced that its sixth generation eDrive technology will use round cell batteries. Those batteries, one, will deliver 20% more range and 30% faster EV charging time. Uh, and so uh, you're looking at really sort of an opportunity to increase the energy density of batteries in order to deliver range that rivals that of gas vehicles. But, and, and also they will be integrating that into uh, their next generation uh, of vehicles as well, uh, much, uh, much like Tesla will. And on the topic of weight, uh, Mazda CEO Jeffrey Guyton uh, made a really good point uh, also uh, in favor of uh, the argument that EVs uh, over 300 miles of range are really unsustainable. And that's the GM Hummer EV. And that EV is four and a half tons uh, and has quite a large battery pack in it. I'm not sure sort of the size of the battery pack, uh, but the vehicle has a... Uh, 350 mile claimed range from GM. And so that is an absolutely massive vehicle. And, and just imagine uh, how large the battery pack uh, needs to be to power a vehicle of over four tons. Uh, and so uh, there has to be sort of a, a limit to, to what's reasonable and, and really sort of pushing the idea of how to uh, think differently about the vehicles, but then also even for safety considerations. So the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety uh, actually had to modify their their facility to test uh, vehicles, uh, pickup trucks uh, that are over 10,000 pounds. And so uh, the Hummer, uh, if you imagine being four and a half tons and then adding some accessories to it could easily exceed uh, 10,000 pounds. Uh, the Ford F-150 Lightning EV, uh, I believe, um, sort of comes in around... 7,500 pounds. And so these are, are massive, massive vehicles. Uh, and safety is a big concern when talking about uh, a sort of non-commercial vehicle uh, being on the road with a vehicle that's roughly half of its weight, 40% of its weight, uh, a huge safety concern. Uh, so again, uh, a good argument uh, from uh, Mazda CEO Jeffrey Guyton as it relates to uh, uh, the weight of EVs and and uh, arguing for uh, smaller battery packs uh, and really improving improvement in, in battery technology as well as uh, the manufacture of vehicles uh, to reduce their weights. The, the other thing to consider as well, uh, going back to uh, Mazda USA CEO Jeffrey Guyton's comments are not only sort of the the range uh, uh, sort of not being the future, sort of EVs uh, being over 300 miles of range, um, but also getting consumers to think differently about how they use the vehicles. And so, for example, in America, uh, the average daily usage in terms of mileage uh, uh, by, by the average American motorist is about 39 miles daily. Uh, in Europe, it's about it's about seventy percent of that, seventy to seventy five percent of that, at roughly thirty miles daily. And so we're talking about you know, roughly anywhere uh, of sort of ten percent uh, actual daily usage of a uh, vehicle's uh, sort of maximum range, uh, 10, 10 to sort of fifteen percent of a vehicle's daily maximum range. Uh, so. Again, when we think about how we use these vehicles, uh, we go to and from work. Well, uh, the night before we charge the vehicle, uh, we do our roughly 20 to 25 mile commute uh, and come home and there's still plenty of battery left and then repeat that process. But even for some of us who don't have access to EVs, for example, uh, more and more uh, office parks and companies are providing EV charging uh, stations at their locations uh, for people to charge. Uh, I know in, in one of my previous uh, employment, uh, uh, my previous employers, uh, there was uh, EV charging stations. Now there's still this debate about uh, how to sort of fairly um, 
uh, sort of uh, allow people to use the EV charger so that someone is not plugged into an EV charger all day. Uh, but these are types of things that can be solved. And so uh, the point is, is to really think about uh, how we use these EVs. I mentioned earlier, even the technology that's going into these vehicles uh, as it relates to software and GPS. And so uh, EV range anxiety, in short, really isn't a thing. Uh, and so um, I know that there are, there are some who, who disagree with that point. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Um, but for those of you who are considering EVs, myself included, uh, it's not really a thing. Uh, so for example, uh, if I were uh, in the market for an EV right now, I'd probably be targeting uh, somewhere in the range of uh, 250 to 270 miles of range. Uh, I believe the uh, base Tesla Model 3 uh, rear-wheel drive uh, will accomplish that. Uh, there's the VW ID3 uh, that I think um, is just short of that, around 220 to 250 miles of range. And then there's the uh, Polestar 2 uh, that uh, is also in that range as well. Uh, now, I live in Japan, which is, is a fairly uh, sort of small country, so it's not necessary for me to have a vehicle to achieve long range to go where I'd like to go. Uh, but even um, in the US, where, where I'm originally from, uh, I'd still be looking at that 275 mile range and, and on a road trip, certainly planning my road trip uh, where you could stop along the way. And so if we consider uh, a 300 mile range vehicle, uh, average 70 miles per hour, that's four hours of driving. And so uh, four hours of driving, good time, in my opinion, to take a rest. Uh, you can eat something, stretch your legs, for example, and let the vehicle charge. Uh, vehicle, can char vehicle can charge uh, back to full in roughly 40 to 60 minutes. And so I don't think that is uh, entirely unreasonable. Uh, and I, I, for safety reasons uh, also, and, and just an overall favorable uh, sort of road trip. So these are some things to think about uh, and uh, wanted to sort of uh, present this uh, and, and, and sort of get your thoughts and, and hopefully it's been useful to you. Uh, but I'd like to hear what you think about it uh, and also whether that informs uh, your, your purchase decision for your next vehicle. Uh, will you consider an EV? Um, if not, uh, what are what are the uh, reasons uh, for not considering it uh, or what are some things that still need to change before you will consider? So uh, that's all for this particular uh, topic. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe or follow. We're on all your favorite social media platforms and podcast platforms. So uh, thanks for checking out this video and see you in the next one.